ChemCast. Hello. In this edition of ChemCast, we're going to take a look at how to draw Lewis structures and tell the geometry, the VSEPR, V-S-E-P-R, of a molecule. Today's problem? Let's draw the Lewis structure and tell the geometry of carbon dioxide. Well, what's the formula for carbon dioxide? CO2. Also, we're going to state if the molecule is polar or nonpolar. Okay, let's get started. First thing that we always need to do when we're drawing these Lewis structures is to find the total number of valence electrons. In this case, we have four valence electrons from the carbon and six from each oxygen. That gives us a grand total of 16 electrons. Next, what we can do is take carbon and put it in the middle and form a single bond with each of the oxygens. Those two bonds will take up four of our electrons. That means we have 12 left. We will draw those in as unbonded pairs of electrons around each atom until we have an octet. Now looking at this, it doesn't add up completely because we have an octet on an oxygen, we have an octet on a carbon, but not on the last oxygen. So we know that this molecule doesn't work like this. We're not done because all three atoms don't have an octet. So what do we try? We try to move some of those electrons down. We can't draw in extra electrons. We can't take any away, but we can move some. So let's move some from this oxygen down to the center where they're shared and make a double bond. These electrons we can move down and make a double bond. Let's redraw that real quick. That still doesn't fully work because we don't have an octet on the oxygen on the right. But if we move the electrons from here to there, then we can have the correct number of oxygens on the carbon and the two oxygens on the side. To determine the geometry or the shape of the molecule, what we do is we have to look at the center atom and see how many atoms are bonded to it and how many lone pairs of electrons there are around that center atom. Well, there are two oxygens bonded to the center. They're both double bonds, but we count them as two things bonded to the center atom. And there are zero lone pairs of electrons around that carbon. There's other pa unbonded pairs of electrons in the molecule, but not on that center atom. So if our pattern is two bonded, zero lone pairs, that will give it a linear shape. We have a 180 degree bond angle between the oxygen, carbon, and the other oxygen. The last thing we can do is take a look at the polarity of this molecule. Is it even all the way around, or is there an area of a partial positive and partial negative charge? Again, we look at the center atom, the center carbon, and see how many things are bonded, how many lone pairs of electrons there are on that center carbon, and then see if there's a difference around that molecule. Are there areas that are going to have more electrons and other areas that have less electrons? In this case, we have two things double bonded. Each oxygen is double bonded to that center carbon. And so we have balance there all the way around the outside is going to be the same charge all the way around. So this molecule is nonpolar. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Whitman Chemtech.